Young LA bans athlete over animal cruelty. Callum Von Moga is back. Good Vito filtered versus unfiltered, plus much more. What's up desktopers, Xavier Wills here for Desktop Bodybuilding and we are back with another bodybuilding news video and let's kick it off with this update here from Callum Von Moga. Looking huge again, he is fully back in the game. He has said previously he won't compete again, but his mind may have changed. He left the caption, change is coming, I can feel it in my bicep vein. So potentially that means he's making a comeback to the stage, but has classic physique left Callum behind? Many say yes, he does have that quad tear. He's had many injuries, but the way he's looking now is pretty damn awesome. So he's back in this game, and we're going to see him, I assume, at all the expos and everything going forward. And let me know in the comments, would you like to see Callum Von Moga compete again or not? Now, in our next story, we've got Hunter Labrada looking ridiculous. These were posted up by his coach, Ben Chow, squat like Chow on IG, and says, Hunter Labrada starting to hit his stride now a few weeks into his off-season. Now, the big part of that is the fact that he's just a few weeks into his off-season. Hunter looks ridiculous here, and everyone at the Arnold was saying Hunter looked crazy big. So what, did Hunter just start his off-season properly then? Whatever Hunter is doing, the, the real food is working. <laughs> Obviously, the last couple of years, as he switched from doing like half shakes during his preps to doing full whole foods, I think for every meal, He's looking absolutely ridiculous. The density is there. And maybe in 2024, we're going to see something special from Hunter Labrada. Maybe all-time best conditioning, all-time best size, and all-time best density and maturity to his physique. Maybe we'll see something that pushes up inside that top four once again at the Mr. Olympia. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Now, we've got Nihat Kaya here. Now, this guy is only 21 years of age, I believe. He's got a ridiculous physique. He posted up this. This is the translated version. It says, bye bye bulk season. I wonder what we added in nine months. Let's get hard, Patrick Tua. So he's going to be moving into the 212 class. It's going to be interesting to see if he has enough in that class to actually really make an impact this year. But going forward, no matter what, if it's this year or one of the years in the future, this guy has a massive, massive future ahead of him. So I can't wait to see his progression in the sport. Our next update comes from Stanimal. Stan DeLongeau, 15 weeks out of his 2024 debut that he's going to be making at the Vancouver Pro. Stan is looking ridiculous right now. We've had him on the Bodybuilding University podcast, obviously, pretty much every episode lately. And in a recent episode with Ron Harris, he outlined all his crazy protocols and all the additional things, the biohacking things, everything he does to get on stage. So go over and check that out. I'll put the link to that in the description below. But Stan is looking really good. He's added quality tissue to his physique. And I think he's going to make a real impact in 2024 because in 2023, he was only one spot away from qualifying for that Mr. Olympia. But let me know if you think Stan will qualify for that 2024 Mr. Olympia. And now we've got an update from Quentin Araya. He hasn't exactly revealed what show he's doing in 2024. There were sort of hints towards the New York Pro. We don't know if it'll be that or if it'll be one of these shows like the Cali Pro or one of these shows after that. But I think New York is going to be the earliest we'll see Quentin on stage, which I believe, I believe we're about four to five weeks out of that right now. Quentin's looking awesome. I don't know if he looks four to five weeks out or not. I'm trying to decipher that in my mind, but he's definitely looking improved. His physique is just ridiculous. And everyone that looks at him says that this guy could be a future Mr. Olympia. I have absolutely no doubt about that. Ridiculously small waist. He said he was worried about that on a podcast after he was heavy for so much longer working with Matt Jansen. It's come in just fine. So Quentin has nothing to worry about there. And I think we're going to see a very impressive physique in 2024. And going forward, 25, 26, 27, 28, I think we're going to see a... <laughs> improving Quentin Araya to the point of up to five or six years from now. In our next story, we've got an update here from Nick Walker, and I want to correct because after the last story, I paused and went and checked when that New York Pro was on, and it is on the 18th of May. So we're seven weeks out currently of that contest, which makes sense on how Quentin Araya was looking, and it makes sense on how Nick Walker is looking. Nick could even hit that stage before then, no doubt. At seven weeks out, that New York Pro, maybe a little bit over that, looking damn impressive. Also, you can see the side chest here, super, super impressive. I don't think anyone is going to beat Nick Walker at New York Pro. Is there a chance? There's always a chance with a guy like Tony Burton going into the show. Who knows? We might get someone else pop up in there as well. 
but I think Nick Walker is a little bit too good. He's too overwhelming. He has too much muscle. And I want to say as well, I did a bodybuilding news video the other day where I said Nick Walker confirmed in the Arnold Classic. I think Nick Walker took exception to that. I was on a podcast with him on Beatty Files channel, and um, he mentioned about clickbait and stuff. But he, you can go over there and check out in that video what he actually said. And also, you can check out the full podcast of Mutant of the Mouth as well, where he spoke about the Arnold Classic when Guy asked him if he would still do the Arnold Classic if he won the Mr. Olympia. But anyway, Nick Walker looking great and in a great position. And I do think after this New York Pro, people are going to be talking about Nick Walker as a potential Mr. Olympia favorite. Now we have an update from Fabioni Sylvain. This guy, he's done classic. He's done open. He's going back to classic with a new weight limit increase. And this is what this guy really needed. And he has a great physique. I'm a huge fan. He looked great when he did open. So with just a little bit less muscle, maybe the same amount even, to be honest. It's not much difference. He is going to look really, really damn good in Classic. He's nine days out of the Charlotte Pro. I don't know if he actually has done Classic as a pro, to be honest. I think he's only done the Open. I think there was teasers of him doing Classic. But I think we're going to see him in Classic in nine days' time at Charlotte Pro. And I am super excited to see how he looks at that contest and to see if he can be some sort of a challenger because... Putting this physique up against Wesley Visser's Ramon Dino, I'd say Ramon Dino is probably the closest comparison. How does this guy compare? Can he be right up there at the Olympia, or is he someone who's going to slot in behind that, or maybe even outside the top 10? But regardless, I'm interested to see how he looks on stage in just nine days' time. Now, we have an update here from Good Vito Vitaly Ugolnigov, as he is only a week and a half out of his pro debut, being prepped by Chris Aceto. This is the translated version from Portuguese to English, and he says, there is very little time left to enter the final stage of preparation. We are improving improving, sorry, every day. Hope my face looks better on championship day. Thank you, and then uh, thanks some people. And then he says, together with uh, the real technician, which is Chris Aceto, we will do exceptional and unique work. So I don't know, I don't know what that unique works about, but uh, hopefully they do exceptional work. Now people have actually sort of made it out like this was not that impressive, and like he has gone backwards. So has Good Vito gone backwards? You can see this comparison photo here by who is the best BB on IG, 10th of Feb to now. That's what six, seven weeks, whatever it is at this point. Now I want to mention, and people have mentioned in the comments, filtered versus unfiltered, and I 100% agree. And the photo on the right, he looks super impressive. And I want to give him props as well for posting up an unfiltered photo. But you can tell these photos are from the same location. And look at the color difference of the background. This can vary camera to camera, but the one on the left is definitely filtered. But he definitely does look bigger. But the thing I think he needs to focus on is conditioning, which you can see through the chest. But as you guys can see here, I did a little bit of a basic edit just to show you what you can quickly do on Instagram, which I think was sort of emulates a little bit of some of the photos we've seen from Vitaly in the past posted on Instagram. So I just think that's what's happened with his photos in the past. I think he's looking better. I'm pretty impressed by this new update. Do I think he'll be beating guys like Rafael Brandeo? No, I don't. Do I think he'll beat guys like Tony Burton? No, I don't think he's at that level yet. But if he falls somewhere just behind those guys and, you know, John De La Rosa and whatnot, I think that would be a very, very impressive uh, impressive pro debut for him. But if he falls further down, then I definitely think maybe unfairly he'll cop criticism online. But anyway, let me know what you think about this latest update. And uh, do you think it's just a filtering difference? And are you impressed by it overall? Now, one of those guys he'll be up against in Rafael Brandeo, looking crazy impressive in these sort of leaked uh, photos off an iPhone uh, updates, which is sort of unique, and I don't know why we'd have leaked ones like that, but looking crazy impressive one and a half weeks out. I just don't see anyone beating this guy, unless it's Tony O'Burton, who we do have some updates from here, looking crazy. And Tony O'Burton is eighth place in the Olympia, coming into this show, probably with improvements as well. It's going to be pretty crazy, this Arnold Brazil. That's the show I'm talking about as well in one and a half weeks' time. Arnold South America, I think, is the correct name. But being held in Brazil. But yeah, Tonio is looking crazy. Super dense, super round, and really has that sort of Dexter Jackson look to his physique. So he's going to be hard to beat for sure. But I think it'll come down to a 1-2 battle. I don't think Good Vito will have what it takes to beat those two.
Now onto a story which is kind of disgusting, to be honest. I don't like it at all. Lee Priest went nuts about this on social media. It's about a guy, an influencer, a bodybuilder, whatever you want to call him, a guy who's sponsored by Young LA and Dragon Farmer. His name is... Now, I never want to lower myself to this level, but involving a story about a guy called Daddy Aoli. Ridiculous name. Um, yeah, anyway. But he's been fired from Young LA for a controversial video of him basically sort of abusing a cat. He sort of strangled it a little bit, sort of hit it in the face a bit, and then picked it up by the back and then kicked it. Not cool. Don't like that behavior at all. And yeah, rightly so, Young LA, I think, should ban him. And he has been banned by them. Uh, and they put out a statement. You can see it on the screen now. It says, we've recently been made aware of a video circulating of one of our athletes we want to assure that we take the matters like this very seriously. At Young LA, we hold our athletes to a high standard of con conduct. As such, we're currently conducting a thorough investigation into the situation internally. And then subsequently from this investigation, he has been let go. Guys, let me know what you think on this situation. I don't know anything about this guy. I don't follow guys like this typically. Do you follow him? What do you think about him? Let me know all your thoughts on that in the comments below because I don't really know much about the situation apart from what has been now reported. And prior to this, I had no idea who Daddy Aoli was. Anyway, that's it for this one, guys. If you did enjoy this video, give the video a thumbs up, smash that like button, also subscribe and click the notification bell button. That way you'll be notified of every video that goes up for myself, Xavier Wills at Desktop Bodybuilding. So for Xavier Wills, this is Desktop Bodybuilding and we are out.